It is 1815. A ghoul in a mortarboard glides among the graves. It glances over the shoulders of the smaller figures, crouched in front of headstones, scratching away at something clutched in their little hands. The early morning mist hasn't quite lifted. People bustle by, ignoring the figures, squinting in the smeary rain, desperately trying to finish their work before they end up soaked to the skin. This is Scotland, a podcast about history and where we made it. I'm Michael Park. As you stop to look in on the boys of the Kirkgate Head School, engaged in their familiar, if weird, activity of copying out the inscriptions of the churchyard's gravestones, you imagine that there must be some better way to practice handwriting. Everybody knows that the graves are ornate, beautifully and lovingly carved by Irvin's finest stonemasons to give the dead of the town a fitting send-off. The schoolmasters know that a lot of the inscriptions are so finely written that it's better than buying in a load of expensive poetry books. So there the wee boys sit, most of them not more than six or seven, copying down epitaphs, and cut off from the group, distant both literally and figuratively, a little boy sits alone, gazing at the grave, which you've seen him at countless times before. To William Crooks, captain of the ship Abyss, who perished at sea 26 November 1791, aged 22. Pray, gentle reader, drop a tear at his untimely fate. You like to him may dread no fear and dangers you await. He that did give can take away that life which was his own, either on the briny sea or land in frozen zone. He here lies anchored with his fleet, companions not at strife, in hopes his saviour Christ to meet, so reader lead a sound life. The little American boy always looks so sad. Even though his adoptive cousin, one of the Galt boys, always takes him round and looks after him, he never seems at ease, his eyes always looking elsewhere, darting, desperate to escape, barely speaking, invariably scribbling, and if the rumours are to be believed, often crying. They say his parents died in Virginia, and that he'd been adopted by a wealthy merchant who couldn't have children. That's where he picked up the Allen in his name. They'd come to Scotland. His adoptive father, John Allen, was well known in Irvine, part of a large family in the area, but he hadn't been home for 20 years. They'd barely been here a month before they went off to London, conducting some kind of business down there, but they sent the wee boy back, along with his cousin, to attend the parish school in Irvine the same parish school they're about to tear down and replace with a new grammar school. He'll go there for a wee while too. The little boy, always so troubled, obsessed with death and separated from the woman he relied on, from the woman he called mother. He'll eventually leave for London, but while he's in Ayrshire he immerses himself in this graveyard. He wanders around at night, you've seen him yourself. One night he couldn't understand why old McGill was out there, sitting watch over a freshly buried corpse. Why, Larry, we didn't want the wee bism to rise for the grave. He said the boy's eyes were wide with fear and excitement. Since old McGill was actually keeping an eye out for body snatchers, probably made perfect sense to the boy that he'd be out there stopping the dead coming back to life. Little Edgar Allen but the boy always insisted on his parents' name too. Edgar Allan Poe. So unhappy. Eventually he'd be reunited with his family in London after threatening to run away. Well, just the six or seven times. He would sail back to America. But no one lives on this coast. With its rugged rocks, tales of darkness and horror shipwrecks, an imperceptible predisposition to the fantastical, 
without it having some kind of effect. From childhood's hour, I have not been as others were. I have not seen as others saw. I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source, I have not taken my sorrow. I could not awaken my heart to joy at the same tone. And all I loved, I loved alone. Then in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life, was drawn from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still from the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm, and the cloud that took the form, when the rest of heaven was blue of a demon in my view. Alone by Edgar Allan Poe You've been listening to Scotland. It was written and produced by me, Michael Park, and is a production of Be Quiet Media. This episode is dedicated to my dad, who told me that Edgar Allan Poe went to the same school as him with such a deadpan delivery that I was convinced he was lying. Sorry, Dad. Additional voices for this episode were by Chris Moriarty and Mitch Bain. Jamie Mowat does stunning illustrations for us, which you can see in our episode art. See more and buy prints at Tidlin, T-I-D-L-I-N.com. Scotland is supported by Chris Lingwood and listeners like you on Patreon. Get involved and support us for less than $2 a month. Well, exactly $2 a month, to be honest, at patreon.com forward slash Scotland History Podcast. You can find out more about the show on our website, this is scotland.co, and on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram by searching Scotland, a Scottish history podcast. Thanks for listening. Look after one another. Wear a mask. We'll see you next time.